this is exactly what I did, and I had placed. Oh, guys. Hey everyone, it's me Curtis. Welcome to my channel. If you are new, or welcome back. If you are a returning subscriber, as you guys can tell from the title of today's video, I'm going to be telling you guys all about my experience hatching pregnantids. So right here I have my little uh, cockatiel Anna, she's just going to be here throughout the video as I tell you guys all about how I kind of found out that I would have the potential to hatch praying mantids. So the story begins with my praying mantis Eden that I had. You guys had met her months ago back in October when I had first got her. If you haven't met her, I will leave the link here because you should definitely check that out um, since that has to do with this whole story. And I didn't make like an official video, I believe, um, talking about how she passed away, but I did mention it um, on my various platforms, I'm quite sure. So actually on October 27th, she laid eggs and I had no idea what to do with them. I kind of had done research as to like what to do with them, humidity and things like that. But the thing is, she laid them on the lid, and so I was like, um, I can't get them off. They were like cemented on the lid. So, you know, um, once she had passed away, they were the only thing in that, like, kind of large enclosure. So I just kind of left them there for a few months, you know, throughout November, December, and most of January, actually. So, once I was about to clean out the things, I was like, you know what? I kept misting them, too, while they were in the enclosure that they were cemented on. But nothing was happening so I want to say around January 18th January 17th I decided to try and take the eggs off of the lid because I remember people would say like you know you can do it you just have to be careful and so anyway that's exactly what I did I was actually able to take like an exacto knife and skim right under the egg case um there was actually two of them and I placed them inside of a little incubator so all of my previous research that I had done had told me like you know keep them in a dormant state like a cold airtight area until you're ready to hatch them and that's not what I did, you know, they were just in the regular tank in my room, um, room temperature. But I also remember reading something about humidity, so that's when I grabbed this little container, and again, this was this year, um, about, I think, January 18th, sometime around then, I don't exactly recall when I did it. But this is just a little container, and what I had done was, all I did was place a little paper towel, I folded it up a couple times, wet it, um, so it wasn't dripping, but it was very damp, and I put it in the bottom of here, and as you guys can see, the two end cases are actually still in here. Um, I don't think there's going to be any more that hatch out of them, or maybe, you know, I'll leave them in a dormant state and try again. This is exactly what I did, and I had placed... Oh! Guys! Guys, there's another mantis in here. I literally checked, like, yesterday night, and it's morning right now, but... Wow. So I'm going to have to get this mantis out after this video, but... You guys are probably not going to be able to see it, but he's, or she is, right here. And that's crazy, exactly what I mean, like, that's exactly my reaction when I first found the first that had hatched. So I'm going to close this up for now. That is crazy, guys, I did not think any more were going to hatch. But this was my incubator at the time, and I had just placed the humid little um, thing. I didn't close it all the way so that there can be a little bit of um, circulation. And I placed it right next to one of my bearded dragon's ceramic heat emitters. And, you know, I saw, like, the sweat and everything. It was, like, warm and it was humid. So I was like, okay, you know, if anything's going to happen, it's happened, it's going to happen now. Yes? So I can't exactly remember where I left off, but I had them next to his light, and you know, I was checking them every day, and I want to say around the third or fourth day, definitely, this was January 22nd, it was almost midnight, and the crazy thing about it is, I was like only up that late, I had school the next day, but I was only, I was only up that late, because I had to pack, because I was going to California the very next day. So right when I was um, feeding Alfie my new hamster, which if you haven't met him, click up here to meet him, but I was... His tank is, uh, her cage is right next to my, um, Breed of Dragon tank, so I, like, took the little incubator, you know, this little incubator, and I looked at it, and I literally, my heart started racing. I could not believe it. There was, I think, like, four or, like, a few, uh, mantises in here hatching, and I saw more coming out. So I will leave clips on screen in just a second on what I saw, but pretty much exactly my reaction when you guys saw... A little bit earlier was my reaction when I first, first, first saw any of them hatch. So it's hard to read on a website how small something can be until you actually see it for yourself. So I was just so shocked when I saw how tiny they were. Literally like two of them can fit on my pinky nail. That's how tiny they were. So right now I'll show you guys some clips of what I saw when the mantises were first hatching.
So that's exactly what I saw guys. I was amazed, you know, I saw more coming out and I noticed that the day before the egg case looked seemed like it was swelling, but I had no idea like what that meant. I was like, you know, let me just keep it here and let it do what it has to do. Sure enough, the next day I checked, there was mantids inside of the little incubator. So I was not prepared, not prepared. What is that? What did I just put my hand on? Anna pooped on the floor. And I just put my hand in it. So as I was saying, I was not prepared whatsoever, you know, I did not have the fr flightless fruit flies, but luckily there's a new pet cove near my house. So I drove over to that pet cove the next day because I was like, these uh, mantids need to eat. Like I rushed out of school, I got out of school early, everything. And I went to Petco and I had to hurry up because I had to, again, leave to go to a different state to catch my flight to California. So, I had once to Petco, they didn't have flightless fruit flies. I had to go to the Petco a couple towns away to go get the flightless fruit flies. I was rushing so bad. I actually had to get Elfie a new water bottle because I just have the worst luck with water bottles. So these are actually the flightless fruit flies that I got. There's a bajillion of them moving around in there. They're, they definitely do reproduce like they say when you don't feed them all, there's so many of them, I don't even know if I'm going to be able to feed all of these off. This was $10.99, and I was like, that's kind of expensive for some fruit flies, but you really do get a lot, and they just continue to breed over and over again. So it's actually so funny and so cute to like watch these tiny little microscopic animals eat, and I won't show it in this video because I actually have a video coming up in the next week, so look forward to that, but you know, I was just so amazed that I had praying mantids again. So you guys are probably wondering where they are, like... I haven't shown you guys them yet. So, so I was just recording for like 10 minutes and it wasn't recording. So now I'm going to have to re-say everything I just said. As I was saying, you guys are probably wondering where they are. You haven't seen them like um, in person, I guess you could say, yet. So here they actually are. Um, this is just, I believe they call it a deli cup with some ventilation holes at the top. I see a couple mantises running around. Um, on the bottom actually you know less of them survived than hatched which is expected here they are they're just in here there's a little uh fake plant here for them to climb on and a wet paper towel at the bottom for humidity moisture and things like that i won't go too in depth with like every little thing inside of their enclosure because i plan on making like an update video where i talk more about that their care and everything so um if you guys are interested in that let me know down below i actually have this container from pisses usa which if you haven't checked out that video, the link will be right here in the card. When he sent me the roaches, I was like, you know, I have praying mantis eggs, so you know, it might come in handy that I'll keep this little container so that, so that when the little praying mantis attach, I will have something to house them in. And look, I think that's all I'm going to say in this video about them. Like I said, I will probably be doing an update video where I talk more about them, but for now, that is everything that I want to say about them. If you guys like today's video, you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram so that you get more pictures, posts, and updates before they hit my YouTube channel. And I also run an Etsy pet shop where I sell pet supplies for rodents, reptiles, birds, dogs, and more. So if you want to check that out, the link to that is always in the description of all of my videos. So if you guys like today's video, definitely make sure that you guys subscribe like right around here so that you do not miss any more of my future content just like today's. And if you would also like to meet another one of my newest pets, click here to meet my newest hamster, Alfie. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video and that you learned a thing or two from it and I hope to see you all in the next one.